and welcome to my channel. It's my first official video, so I want to say thank you for tuning in. If you're new to my channel, of course you're new. Um, it's a new channel, so we might as well just jump right in. So today I want to talk about a few books that I think are essential to have in your arsenal if you are a writer or you want to become a writer or you're thinking of becoming a writer. Um, these books are geared toward nonfiction writing, but they are also helpful in the fiction world too, except for one. So the first one I'm going to suggest um, is, uh, I'm sorry, it's <laughs> On Writing Well by William Zinsser. Um, all three of these books I was assigned as a journalism student and um, they have been immensely helpful. My copy of On Writing Well has since disappeared, um, but I will probably end up buying another copy just because it's um, super helpful. So in that book, you learn how to, you know, construct a sentence. And William Zinsser, <laughs> in the book, he, he makes criticisms of, of the grammatical structure and um, the way people construct a sentence. And, you know, he suggests ways to correct it. Um, I unfortunately don't have it committed to memory, but I do remember when I read the book, it did make an impact on the way I started to write. So that is the first book um, that I'm going to suggest. The second book I'm going to suggest is um, The Elements of Style by Strunk and White, E.B. Strunk. I'm sorry, William Strunk and E.B. White. Um, this one is a really small book and it packs a wallop actually. There's a lot of information in here that is super helpful for, um, writing all kinds of writing and it actually gives you, um, words and expressions that are commonly misused, which I find to be very helpful because I don't know how many times I've read and listened to people using words and terms incorrectly. Um, they use them in the wrong context or they use them believing their definition is one thing when it's something else. And I think this book, if you're a writer especially, will it, you, I've had this book for 11 years. This book is super helpful and it doesn't change. There are some, some of the language is a little antiquated because it is an older book. Um, but it is, they are constantly updating it. Um, the last print, I think this print was, yeah, um, let's see, it was recopyrighted in 2000. So while some of the verbiage is a little antiquated, it's still super helpful. So for example, words and expressions commonly misused, we're going to go with the word, oh, gosh, there's so many. Um, okay. Effect. E-F-F-E-C-T. Effect. Here it says, as a noun means result, as a verb means to bring about to accomplish, not com not to be confused with affect, which means to influence. So again, a lot of people, especially on social media, they use effect and effect. They use it interchangeably. A lot of times the word effect is used in replacement of the word affect. If you know this rule or if you care about, you know, your writing and you know this rule, this is a good one to know. Um, so this book, super helpful. I, this book, I, I can't say enough about this book. It's a wonderful book. Um, and I mean, it's not like, oh, you're going to read it for light reading or whatever, but just, you know, if you want to brush up and sound like you, you know, know what you're talking about, that's a book to have in your arsenal for sure. The third book I'm going to suggest is The Associate press um, style book, Associated Press style book. That's a book that is written for journalists by journalists. It's helpful um, if you want to become a freelance writer and you want to write for publications 
like the Associated Press or maybe your local paper or even some magazines and even some businesses use uh, the Associated Press. They use AP style on their blogs and in their uh, marketing materials. The AP style book has rules for how to use and how to uh, write things like titles, um, when to use certain words, things like that. Super helpful. It's not a dictionary, however, so, you know, the fourth book I'm going to suggest is a dictionary just to make sure you're using the right words in the right context or you have the right definition of words because nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes when they're writing. Everybody, you know, uses words improperly. It happens and you don't want to be the one who is looking kind of crazy or who's writing something that makes no sense to your reader because you're using a word in the wrong context or you're misusing a term. So um, those are the three books, I'm sorry, the four books that I uh, suggest. I am actually just starting to listen to On Writing by Stephen King. That is a memoir about writing. So he discusses, you know, his his uh, childhood, how he got into writing and what he knows about the craft now. Uh, he is a fiction writer, as you probably know, a horror fiction writer, and um, I'm a fan. And I never actually got a chance to read the book, so I put it in my um, Audible library, so that's where I will be listening to it. Um, the book is about eight hours, so I believe I'll probably, you know, listen to it over the next couple of days and I will probably include that in my list, my next list of books that I suggest for writers. Um, it's always helpful to read books about writing and I don't mean books where some jerk is saying, well, in order to be a good writer, you must do this and you must do that because a lot of times people who our authors, they are so, they have their own opinions and they believe their opinions are better than everyone else's. I have no opinions. Well, I am, of course I have opinions, but I don't have opinions about, you know, what will make you a great writer because great writing is subjective. So, you know, what I think is great writing, the next guy could think is garbage and vice versa. So you have to keep that in mind. When you're writing, there will be critics, always. Some people will like your writing, some people will love your writing, and some people will just dislike your writing, regardless of who you're writing for and what you're writing about. And so that's one of the things that you have to take into consideration when you're a writer, is that a lot of times, even if it's unwanted, <laughs> unasked for, you will, you'll hear from the critics and they're the loudest voices. Unfortunately, you can get five fan letters or five, um, glowing reviews or tons and tons of positive feedback on your social media, whatever the case. And there will be one person who can just bring your whole day down. And that's their goal is just to ruin your day. So, we should try as writers, as aspiring writers, authors, to uh, to look above those people because a lot of times they have, you know, black souls. Um, also, I have, um, I've been writing on a website called medium.com for a little over a month. Um, actually, it's about a month and a half now. And... I did not stick to my experiment, which was to write every day on the website. I am finding that it's frustrating. That is a frustrating area, and I will talk about that in another um, video. Um, also, this is November. November is NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month. And so I have started a project for NaNoWriMo. Um, today is almost halfway through November. And the goal is to write about 1,667 words a day in order to hit your 50,000 word um, goal. That's the goal for NaNoWriMo, 50,000 words. Um, 
I am less than 2,000 words in. So what does that say? Um, writing is hard. The people who are like, oh, it's just a piece of cake are either they're freaks of nature or they're liars. So, um, and if you are participating in NaNoWriMo and you have already met that 50,000 and surpassed that 50,000 word goal, please, please give me whatever it is that you're taking or share the, uh, the knowledge because it's difficult. However, I do have a billion other things that I have to get done during the week. So that might have something to do with um, my lack of progress. However, I am a procrastinator. I admit that I procrastinate a lot. I probably could win the the Olympics, the gold medal um, in the procrastination Olympics. <sighs> that said... I vow to do better moving forward and hit those, those, uh, word milestones. Um, so that is all for today. I appreciate you watching. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments or, uh, send me an email. You can email me, um, at creatively yours at gmail.com or um, visit my social. I'll put the links in the box and you can, you know, do what you do. So until next time, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.